I can thank you. The Ghanaian Times, EC terminates contract of foreign IT firm. Transport fares up by 10%. Medina AstroTurf to be ready uh, October, according to the Zongo minister. Big military complete swoop on criminals. 354 suspects rounded up in separate operations in the central and western regions. And um, you find that newspaper. I don't need EC's help to win. President backs free and transparent electoral process. Government to recruit 600 right to information officers. Primaries. MPP clears 292, disqualifies 18. Take advantage of free SHS devoid of politics, Mr. Volete is saying. Daily Guide. Amidou sues Attorney General over 47 million euros. Wyoming Waterville Cash. It comes with a photo of Martin Amidou, the present Attorney General Gloria Kufu and Alfred Agbesi Wyomi. Baumia invites Mahama and uh, in a, a, a nice photo there. Well, Jean Mensah exposes massive uh, rot at EC and soldiers police sweep Budumburam. Serial rapist Robbers remanded. Daily graphic. Deliver credible elections. President charges EC and Adam, Adam Robe. The community with hearing impaired above global average. We won't call off strike until Nagrat insists and EC abrogates IT contract with vendor. My guest this morning, Mr. Eric uh, Chum. He is a member of the MPP's communication team and also lawyer Abraham Amale, a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. Gentlemen, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Rainy Friday. What's the feeling like for you? Well, um, it's a pleasure to be here once again. Uh, good morning to yourself, to mm. my good friend here. I've been seeing him for a while. Mm. And to the good people watching uh, TV3 mm. uh, this morning. Mm. I, 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 I shudder to think that on Monday, transport fares will go up. I <laughs> is that your good am morning? of the view that <laughs> this government is tightening the people of this country. And I think that there's need to hit the streets. Okay. It is an insensitive government. Mm. It's a government that promised the people that it will reduce fuel prices. Now, what are we seeing? So I should have to think that as Ghanaians, we mm. should tighten our belts. We should expect more hardship mm. and that there's a need to hit the streets. I thought I was asking about your health. My health is not divorced from the economy. Okay. So that is my help. <laughs> okay, I hear you. <laughs> so you say good morning to you, brother. <clears throat> good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Let's uh, start off. I, I, we just picked the CSSPS uh, issue, the school placement system for the youngsters who are getting into secondary school. I'm sure you've had a couple of the problems that, that have come up. And I've been asking, after 10 years of running this, should we still be waking up to these problems you choose a school you can't find a school you have to pay to log on to check you have to pay to check your placement and and somebody said in one of the text messages that we seem to formulate policies for those in the urban areas when the rural folks are left behind what do you think what do you say how do we get out of this web well um, thank you very much um, going to school for the very first day it's um, exciting mm. and then also traumatic for every parent and uh, student. Mm. I remember when I went to Form 1, I, I was just about 10 and I had to carry my chop box okay. and trunk all together. And you can see a 10 year old mm. um, carrying their own. I mean, it's one of those things that um, happen. So I think that over the period, um, uh, mm. it's a no brainer that we should be able to perfect. Um, a system that would make it a bit easier for one parent and then also even the schools and then uh, by default the students to make it easier for them to uh, go into school when it happens. I think by and large, mm -hmm. I mean of course you would find that people will still have challenges but by and large uh, if you're looking at a system that is uh, less chaotic mm and cumbersome, I think that the computer placement system has helped. Uh, back in the days, you find parents, uh, thousands and thousands of parents mm. moving from one place to the other, going to actually check on a notice board mm. in the school right. to ascertain if a, a child, even universities used mm. to do it. Mm. So we've made some strides. 
but there are basically no excuses that in 10 years that we've been doing this, mm -hmm. we've still not been able to perfect the system to the point where. Okay. But again, I've listened to, I think it was the Deputy Minister of Information, uh, Dr. Educhum, mm. who was essentially stating the processes that you can go through if uh, you find yourself in some kind of border or mm. uh, you have issues that you want uh, resolved. Mm. So maybe in terms of the communication and education mm. as to what parents are meant to do when they find themselves in these situations mm. hasn't been forthcoming. We maybe waited too long for the uh, the uh, CPS mm. to come out before we even started the uh, communication of it. Okay. And even the schools, you know, so all of these kids are coming from GSS, right. which means that they are coming from a particular school, mm -hmm. which means we can interact with the various schools that okay. they come from mm. because they would have a certain, uh, if you like, proximity mm. to those schools that mm. they have gone to so mm. that the school would also be able to uh, support them, especially when they're facing uh, okay. challenges. Um, let's find new ways of making sure that, and it's a computer mm. system, so mm. which means that every now and then you will have some hitches um, so that next year we don't come and sit here and essentially talk about the same things. But if you look at the number of students mm. and you sort of <coughs> uh, compare that to the number of people who are having issues, it mm. means that by and large the system that has worked mm. over a period. Um, of course, you still have issues. Once it happens like that, my phone hasn't stopped ringing where mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people are sending you messages that my word has been sent to their <laughs> second choice school and third choice school. Intervene for me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but it, it, again, it looks like we, in terms of even the choices in, you make when you, wa you want to mm. choose these schools, we haven't been able to explain it properly. I, I thought that the and Ghana Education Service said they had guidance and counseling units in the schools and because for me, I mean, I went to a public school. What happened was that we had one vibrant teacher. Mm -hmm. He was not a counselor because mm -hmm. they never called him so and we never knew him, him or so. But he was vibrant and he would look at your test score mm -hmm. over time and decide that, oh, you, you can go to a disco and go and do science. science yeah. You, you yeah. can go to Mary's yeah. and go and do visual arts. Yes. So they decide mm -hmm. and then they tell the parents. And because the parents know that this is the teacher who's been instructing my child mm -hmm. over time, they accept it. Yeah, that should that be it? Yeah, I think that that's what I'm saying. That are they, I'm not sure if we have guidance and counseling. But G GSS, are people, are they, GSS, are they, are they, are they, we have it. Are they, Each they, time we have asked them, yes. GSS, we I, have I, them. I don't know. I won't uh, pretend to be an expert in the field. But at the GSS level, I don't know if, if we have that in mm. every school. But I think that that's an extra, if you like, a value addition that the schools can actually mm. uh, bring on board so that it will help. As what you're talking about, which is also significant, the difference between what pertains in the urban mm. areas and mm. then rural areas, mm. if you're talking about <coughs> diffusion of either internet or the mm. data mm. itself or the ability for people to get access to mm. these things, which means that there has to be some kind of offline uh, measure mm. to be able to, to, check. To, to check, to make sure that when these kids, mm. is it possible that, for instance, at the uh, regional and district education mm. level, mm. the uh, school placement people would actually bring a, a printout, for instance, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. students would be able to go and have access and look at it and all of those. And because once it's education, which is almost, uh, it's become a right mm -hmm. as part of the SDGs, then it means that you have to make sure that even all the various mm -hmm. aspects of it, the facets of it are open and transparent and it's accessible to young people. F to Final one to you. How, how do we marry the two concepts of uh, where GES says, don't take printing fee, don't take uh, exam fees. So the teachers end up writing the questions on the blackboard. And then you would have to pay maybe twice, thrice what the teachers were demanding for to print the papers just to check your results and to get placement. Because you're paying as much as 30 CDs to do that. The teachers say, pay five CDs and let's print the papers for them. GES says no. I don't think you pay to get placement. You just no. need to check where you're, you're being placed. Well, but you're losing, and it's uh, money that you are exchanging no, no, for but information. I, 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 that I, is yours. I, I, I get <laughs> it, but I'm saying that really as parents, if for some reason, or one reason or the other, parents have even a challenge with mm. the 30 CDs or even having access to the 
internet itself and where they come from by virtue of the fact that it's in a rural area. Mm -hmm. My view is that let's, we can find another way. Either we resource the schools that the kids go to so okay. that they can have access to that. Mm -hmm. As to the conversation around printing and sort of trying to marry the two between printing of... It doesn't make uh, sense. No, I'm not saying that. I mean, okay. that, I mean I, I'm, I'm not in the education okay. sector. Oh, but I'm asking, uh, I mean, that, if yeah. you're, you're, you're a parent. Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. That. So government says, don't pay money to write the exam. Mm -hmm. Because education is supposed to no, be but that's, free. You're talking about BEC is paid for freely by government. Exactly. You know, yeah, you understand. Exactly. So the so, government pays for it. So why does government, government why the, does the government have a facility where you can go and check your results and you know your placement for free? Yeah, but that is a conversation. It is not. You see, when you make it, you bring it out like that. It's almost as if that these things are set in stone. I believe strongly that, to be honest with you, if it's a computer generated system, mm -hmm. at the point when you've already put in the investment. There will be a point where you've probably reaped in enough mm -hmm. uh, resources and mm -hmm. everything. And in areas where they do not have access to it. And I think that you can even make sure that the school itself okay. that they go to would have access to the, the system mm -hmm. so that parents who, for one reason or that, if the guy is sitting on a farm somewhere in my village in mm -hmm. Abompe, really, it will be difficult for them to do so. Okay. So the kids themselves will probably even have to take a bit of initiative mm. and try and find what their results are and everything. But if it's very clear, mm. and I don't know what the policies at the district education or directory levels are, but if it's clear that at that point the schools are going to be resourced to be able mm. to do so, it's a conversation we should have. Because okay. in the final analysis, what's the, Let, point, let's bring, let's bring what's the point in a child writing the BEC, mm. for instance, and because of 30 CDs or so. And I haven't seen that it's, it's become a difficulty for anybody. But if it's a difficulty, well, then some, let's, some, some of the parents say, it. look, yeah. they live in a village, and they come by council. <sighs> These are the issues I'm emanating from, from uh, back to school. Uh, what do you say? Well, let me start by saying good morning to your viewers. Let's go back and look at the philosophy behind the introduction of the computer um, placement. placement system. Okay. It was to bring about equity okay. and then to ensure fairness. Right. You notice that before the introduction, there were some particular schools that admitted children of old boys and old girls. Right. Mm -hmm. Then, if you were a child whose parent did not belong to that club, mm. no matter how good you were, you couldn't have access to those type of schools. So, with the introduction of the computer system, this was to cure that type of uh, inequality in the system. Mm. And so, when you look at the philosophy, it's a good idea, it's good. Because now, a child in my village can come to Achimota right. by dint of hard work. And that, for me, is good. But the challenges we are having are man-made. They are man-made in the sense that... The, the it policy is, is man-made, too. Well, no, the computer system <laughs> yeah. has... It's okay. fair. Okay. It grants us the fairness, yeah. yes. Mm. But because... It is the human being who deals with the computer. Right. Definitely, you have some challenges. Right. Now, these challenges should not lead to us abandoning the computer placement system. We should find a way, because I am enthused about the fact that I can go back to my village, and when I ask the child whose school I attend, Achimota, it gives me some satisfaction that as a nation, mm we have decided to decentralize our education system and that some schools are not the preserve of only some people right. with particular names. But have, have we done a asse total assessment of the, the system, the policy, after running it for some time? I haven't read any monitoring and evaluation report having been done on it. I have not seen, I'm here to see one. That is, is, that, is that the way to go? I think that in, in every the implementation of every policy, mm. in, the implementers will have to step back to have a review. Mm. To be honest with you, the challenges that the school placement system face in mm. the first two years are not the same that we are seeing. Okay. Um, I have heard 
a parent complain about the child getting six ones mm -hmm. and raw score of 407 <coughs> or the 470 mm. but got the fifth choice we need explanations to these things mm. how does that happen but i also think that it is not far from also laying accusations at the doorstep of the managers of the system okay. now okay. if we are still getting some challenges in respect of this good policy. Mm. And so we should begin to ask the questions. Let's continue asking the questions and let's have them. You can invite them mm. here mm. to explain to the people of Ghana why all these years after the implementation, we still have these challenges. Right. Look, the issue of uh, the 30 cities that they have to pay, mm. I think that is a real issue. <clears throat> and for me, my colleague was making some suggestions. What I think is that the children and their parents should not be the ones going to pay and you know, clicking a button to see where mm. the results are and those mm. things. Mm. That should be given to the schools. The, school the printout the okay. should be schools. given to the schools. The okay. schools that the, the right. child completed. Yeah. And then the children can go there. In fact, that was our system. That was our system. Existed. Now, yeah. I don't know whether... That was our system. Yeah, that was our system. Yes, but then you, the parents would now have to go to the school to go and... You have to go to the school okay, that they chose up, to check if the Your names name are there. there. Okay. But yeah, this yeah, one, yeah, I'm yeah, saying but this that one is different. it should go to the, the school they completed okay. and check where they have been placed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. That one will be free of so, charge. So that, so that all information is go sent to the, to the school. school. So you go to your former school, school. Yes. and you get your result yeah. and where you've been placed. Exactly. Yes. Wahala down. Done. Okay. And that, that money or that um, financial burden should not be placed on the child or the parent. Mm -hmm. It's the school that must deal with it. Okay. And that will cure these 30 cities. Look, it's a real challenge. With the way they are running this economy, 30 cities is a, is, is, is a big issue. No, I, th economy. I thought you were not going there. Where? <laughs> <laughs> ah. I thought we were no, no. talking. We were talking from a nationalistic point but of view. No, but but I'll, then, I'll get it. But, then, but, then but, you, when they were in power, when they sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, deep, uh, press sometimes, press sometimes when you people say <laughs> one is one is doing politics. Oh, well, I didn't say. No, no I'm not saying politics. that. I'm just saying okay. something. Some mm. people are saying, "Oh, why this is more you are playing politics? This is a political show. This is not a cultural show. <laughs> this is not a religious show. This is not an entertainment show." <laughs> you invite me to an entertainment show, and I'll tell you how, how Shatawali and uh, 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 this people are. So this is a political show. So let me go political. So thirty cities is actually an issue. Okay. And so we shouldn't burden our parents the more mm -hmm. let the schools handle it that's what i think should okay be. great Let, let's tie that in with nagrat uh, being on strike these uh, students if they get their placements they see their results means that they're starting school whether green track or gold track they're going to be in school now what are they going to school to because the teachers who are supposed to teach them say we have laid down our tools and well the national labor commission should go and sleep because until we have met our, our total membership we won't go there, solve our issues, or we won't go. That's a disaster waiting to happen, Eric. How is government dealing with it? Well, I mean, it's, um, <coughs> it's unfortunate. I've followed <coughs> the whole uh, saga from afar. It's almost um, as if that once school is just about to open, mm. uh, they have more, if like, um, a better bargaining power because then uh, everybody that's on the table mm. or the stakeholders are enjoined to resolve the, <coughs> resolve the issues. Um, in the final analysis, I think that's the kids that suffer. Mm. Uh, so I would urge that, I mean, I think that some com uh, conversation has already started. Um, I heard the Minister of Education actually saying that Nagra has a case. Okay. Um, I've mm. also listened to Nagra, and they have um, listed out a plethora of things that they have <coughs> issues with, with some allowances, mm. some promotion issues that has to do with, I think it's the uh, Public Services Commission or okay, so, yeah. and all sort of things, mm -hmm. which has, some of them, they say as far back as six or seven years, yeah. uh, it hasn't been done, mm -hmm. uh, which means that really um, they have a case. But in the final analysis, uh, when these things happen, mm -hmm. you realize that we say that because eventually it, it would be resolved, mm -hmm. uh, there has to be some level of uh, if like goodwill uh, so that it will allow 
uh, the teachers to go back to school whilst mm. the issues are being are we, are, we, are we showing them the goodwill? Especially when the minister responsible for that mm. particular sector has uh, basically been categorical that mm. there's a case. But then also, there's also an under angle that comes from, I think it's the Labour Commission mm. or so, mm. which states that there's meant to be a, some processes that they have to follow. Exactly, and before, before they finally go on strike. Mm. You see, and the thing, we have this conversation all the time. Mm. And I think that we are learning it, it's, it's a fledging democracy mm. and everything. But we want to be governed by a set of rules and regulations <coughs> and also tenets of democracy so that there's no, it's not chaotic. Mm. Um, so it's for nothing that we put all of these things in place to make sure that mm. one, the teacher themselves or even the workers do not feel that by because of that mm. government or even their employers are unduly uh, punishing them because mm. there's a particular uh, protocol in place mm. but also to make sure that uh, people or employers employees will not just get up and mm. go on strike so they put together all these processes to help it okay. i think that maybe at a point mm -hmm. the communication broke and if, for instance, you've been agitating for something for six, seven years right. and nothing has happened, mm -hmm. it means that they, 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 the cocks, the various stakeholders have not come to the table. Mm -hmm. I mean, why is it that um, there's so much issues to do with promotion at the uh, mm -hmm. GES N level? Nagra says, look, our, they our, have our demands have been clear. You are just not listening. Not no, you alone. No, no, but, yeah, but that's what I'm listen. saying. That You see, some of these things take a long time. I mean, we're so, talking about. So, so then they say, look, yeah. we, we have placed our demands on your table. You give us assurance, nothing happens, and now you are reassuring us. We would go solve the problem before we go. No, I, I understand. I mean, and the thing is that I'm, I'm not saying that they don't have merit in mm -hmm. what they are mm -hmm. asking for. I'm saying that in the final analysis, it's a, it's a whole stakeholder conversation. So you have students, you mm -hmm. have teachers, mm -hmm. you have the parents, you have government, you mm -hmm. have GS as an employer, and. You sit around the table and mm. find solutions to some of these things. I'm saying that even while Nagrat is reported to be on strike and they're being asked to go back, issues to do with, for instance, promotion. Mm. I mean, how do we perfect a system that it may be if after every three, four, and apparently they don't even get called to come and do the interview. Okay. So once you don't do the interview, it means that you are actually not well, not promoted, not, being not promoted, up for it, up for it. And most of these people apparently. Uh, I've, been, I've been put in acting positions. Mm. They're doing what they call extra duties, where mm. Mm. extra responsibilities right. that they are meant to be paid for. Mm. So I think at the secondary school level, if you are an assistant housemaster head or headmaster head 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 or whatever, you have extra exactly. responsibilities. Right. And these are the things that they are asking for. So let's deal with it. Mm. Let's ensure that. But I mean, if you look at what this government has done, I mean, even since uh, in the last two and a half years mm. or so, more than 56,000 teachers have been employed. You understand? Mm. So that is huge. It's a huge, it's a, it's a significant number. But even if you look at what has happened at the um, uh, second cycle mm -hmm. level alone, mm. where uh, for the t double track, 9,000 teachers have been employed. That is huge. Mm. But we need to find ways of making sure that these things do not take three, four, five, six years, and then it gets to a point where uh, the teachers would go on strike. But government, again, has shown mm. commitment. As we speak, the allocations to the schools have gone. I mean, feeding and all those other things. But, but the, students, so the students are there. They will be hanging in there until you fix it. Do we have a timeline? The government is looking at this. Because no, what? They, I think they, the government the green track is starting, what, next week? Next week. Uh, but government, They're registering this government week. has shown commitment. I, I think that, uh, I mean, listening to the education, Minister, for instance, it was a bit reassuring mm. that well, he appreciates that these things are ongoing. But again, you see, in all of these things, there are different stakeholders. So they are mm -hmm. talking about issues to do with promotion, mm. which has essentially nothing to do with mm. uh, the GES, if per my understanding. It has something to do with a public services mm. commission. Mm. And then they are talking about issues to do with the allowance, okay. which means that it has to be computed and go to through a process, either mm. a controller mm. and all of those things. Mm. And even at the district education directorate level mm. and a regional directorate level, they are the ones who are supposed to put all of these put teachers together. together and make sure that they send to a national level and everything. Mm. That's why I'm saying that. Between the teachers and even government and the other stakeholders, it, it, it almost seems as if that we need to find a way of 
bringing new policies in place to sh make sure that you don't wait seven years, if, of course, if you're due for promotion, or six years, okay. for that to happen. Okay. Comes and that up. has financial implications well, as well, because if you move from one tier to the next, mm -hmm. you know, it means that you're meant to be, I mean... But we need to find a system. Once okay. we're finding the system, we need to find the money to fund it. <laughs> Council, yes, um, Nagrat is still on strike. The yes. children are registering, and um, well, if if they don't get in there by Monday, it means that the children will just around there. They will be eating and sleeping, and maybe reading on their own. If there's anything like that, um, what we need to find out is uh, this government's policy towards the teachers. They have a free senior high school program. Right. Now, embedded in this program, did the government think about the welfare needs of the teachers? Mm. Because the successful implementation of free senior high school program depends largely on the teachers. And I can tell you that a disgruntled teacher or a dissatisfied teacher is like a cake of gunpowder waiting to explode. Mm. Now, if you have a dissatisfied teacher mm. going to teach these students, if you can't teach them, you hear the, poly, the, 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 the you, principal, you confuse, you confuse them. them. So, under the free SHA policy, what is the policy, or if you want the sub-policy towards motivating teachers? Mm. Is there anything like that? I want to know. Eric is there? That was. Uh, a motivational no, pack but, uh, for the teachers. No, but Qu quickly, then, then he can. Uh, listen, uh, I think that if you go to um, our manifesto, even 2016, it was clear and emphatic. Um, you can't satisfy everybody at, I mean, at the goal. But you but said I te know teachers are suffering. Yeah, no, drivers are yes, suffering. But, but mates by are and large, I mean, that's like I'm saying, if you look at, I'm not trying to uh, trivialize the issues that have been raised by um, Nagrat, right. right? But if you look at, even in the past, things that, reasons why they have agitated and they've gone on strike, mm -hmm. these are not the same issues that they're talking about. So tell in the past, what, what, the, in the past but, uh, they uh, had uh, issues uh, to uh, do uh, with... Our question is simple. Uh, no, uh, no, 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 question no, is, no, what is your policy no, standpoint listen, for welfare? Of course, the teacher is an integral part of the whole process. I mean, probably the they don't have the So, so what are you giving them in return but, for, for making but, sure that the free teachers, SHS works? No, but teachers have always had a role to play. And I'm saying that if you look at what we have done and what the issues that they are talking about today, it's different from the He's time when... Listen, 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 listen. Okay. Okay. It's different from the time when... Allow, allow him to take his time. They were going on strike. Allow him to take his time. Allow him to take his time. This is issues to do with promotion. This is issues to do with uh, allowances that are going to teachers that have extra responsibility and, and, and all that. And some pensions so, and, and Exactly. And, so that, and those things that. will okay. be dealt with. But to sit here and suggest that... Okay. There's oh, no, he's not suggesting. He's no, asking yes, you. But that, so I you provide it. Yes, what, I what have is told it? you that. You I have told you that. The teacher today. The teacher today. I want my time back. If you go back to Eric, all the sources, I want my time back. I want to answer that. So you see, you cannot send a demotivated teacher to the classroom and expect results to be good mm -hmm. in this free SHG policy. Now, look, it appears sometimes when I look at some government officials and government appointees, mm -hmm. these matters that they are talking about, mm -hmm. what you can do to bring in some confidence mm -hmm. is to form what is called a working group. Okay. That working group will be meeting periodically. And this working group will be made up of uh, the NAGRAT members, then the Ministry of Education, mm. and then uh, Educa Ghana Education Service. Right. The three will come together, form a working group. Now, members in this working group who belong to NAGRAT will then be reporting back to their membership and uh, 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 stating the progress they are, they are making. But if you don't include the stakeholders in the discussions, you don't... Uh, inform them of the happenings or the goings mm. in the ministry. Mm. Then membership will begin to think that, look, the ministry has forgotten of us, right. government has forgotten of us. But if you include them and you are able to form that working group, mm. 
NAGRAT is part of the working group, right. they would be tracking mm. the progress. So they will go back and tell their people, oh, uh, at the last meeting, we're able to secure some commitment from government mm. in respect of our clothing allowance right. or what allowance right. and those things. So I think that... Why, why has this been lost on us? People do not think beyond the box, not uh, out of the box. Because sometimes when you think out of the box, it's too close to the box. <laughs> so <laughs> people don't think beyond. It, we must go and carry some information and come. Okay. But I think that they are listening to us. This is part of the uh, right. program. They, they will understand that you need to form a working group, right. which is constantly meeting, mm -hmm. and then they can be reporting back. Crystal, yes, welcome. Johnny, thank you so what much. are they saying on WhatsApp? Yeah, someone says, Good morning, Johnny. I bought the selection booklets at 10 cities that I used to select the schools for my ward, oil man from Borga. Um, Nick says, good morning, TV3. Johnny, I sometimes wonder whether our politicians really have this country at heart. I can't really think far. The fact that their kids are not even schooling in Ghana, they can get up and implement anything that is not well organized or planned. If you go to farm without a hoe or cutlass, what work do you expect to do? Good morning. Please, what is happening to our education system? Please, we parents did not say we cannot pay and feed our wards in the SHS. Why should GES make most of the Form 1 students as day students at schools with boarding facilities? Example, Navarongo SHS has facil facilities to accommodate students, but students placed from other regions are made day students simply because governments cannot feed them. Hmm, this is certainly not the type of free SHS we wanted. Our Hassan from Navarongo says. Mustafa from Yendi says, it is not true that every teacher has the resource pack under the new curriculum. The whole Yendi municipality, each school is given three packs. Why the rush? It is disheartening when some Ghanaians think the heretics they go through to correct the common mistakes on the ward uh, placement outweighs government efforts free SHS efforts. We still remember in the past when children were manually placed, parents suffered more than this and still paid for their award school fees. Please, let's for once be appreciative to our president for the free SHS. Um, it has no co-equal. Zingna um, Awal. Good morning, Johnny. I think GES rushed in implementing the new curricula, curriculum knowing that the TLMs are not ready. This computer placement is problematic. Same issues every year. Results check-in must be free. Ebenezer Mensah from Sifri Bikwai. Good morning, Johnny. I beg to say our country is sick. Oh. My brother went to Sogakofe JSSB Primary School to seek admission for his children this Monday, only to be told that he has to bring furniture for them to sit on because the school is lacking that. Free education indeed. Wow. Why should students pay for their placements from Jesse among Nukrum? Johnny, good morning. Please inform the GES Director General that we teachers in the Saboba district have not received our resource packs yet. A few came and each school received just one copy. Again, remind him that the circuit supervisors here are not yet, sorry, are yet to receive the special training he spoke about. John from Saboba. Thank you very much, TV3, for discussing this issue on placement. My nephew in Akemoda was not placed in any of the five selected schools of her choice, of his choice, which include being a day student in one of the schools in Odam. She had been denied and rather placed in a school in Ashanti region as a day student, which is not one of her choices. The parents are so confused. TV3, please help us out. The major problem is those who were placed in schools that they did not even choose. Wow. I still don't know why some students are, aren't posted and have to go for placement again. What really are we doing with our educational system? We are destroying the lives and hope of our children. Aram from Adenta News Sites. And lastly, the school placement is, complete, is a complete disaster. Can you imagine how these young ones feel? Hey, NPP, is that what you're, you promised Ghanaians? Hmm. That, is, that is our last comment for today. Okay, thank you very much, Crystal. I, I thought we were not going to uh, do NDC MPP with this one because um, <laughs> the, the curriculum is not NDC, neither is MPP, it's to help everybody. But um, yesterday, the electoral commissioner and the team uh, met the president. Fallout from MIT, where the fact that the IT contract had been abrogated. The Rupal was also central, and the president taxed the EC to deliver credible elections. And the EC boss 
says she it was very disturbing that even though it had a 55 member IT department, the EC could not hold elections on its own without the tacit approval and authority of the IT uh, vendor. And here's how much we were paying. The chairperson of the EC, Mrs. J. Mensah, uh, explained that although the system um, the, the, the vendor had total monopoly over the system and could shut it down at any time. The EC was required to pay $56 million for upgrade, $4 million every year as maintenance fee, and $1.5 million for the internet service delivery. In any case, this data that is collected, as we got to know, uh, was being sold or, or traded, okay. and we, <laughs> we are not getting anything. We whose data were being traded, we had nothing. Eric, this has been cancelled, but let's take the issues one after the other, the, 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 mm -hmm. because we don't, we don't have a lot of time. So take a bite quickly. The president says, deliver credible elections, and they say we have cancelled the IT contract and uh, Rupa as well. Well, I mean, um as stakeholders in the whole, uh, if you like, um, electoral enterprise, uh, it's imperative that we have an EC that is fit for purpose. Mm. And like the president rightly said, also engender free, transparent system so mm. that once an election is uh, called, uh, it's essentially by and large the, mm. uh, the voice of the people. And so that is what any mm. real democracy would clamor for. And I think that's what we all want. Uh, the EC has gone through, uh, if you like, organic uh, processes over the period. I mm. mean, uh, in 1992, we had an opaque ballot. Box, right. And we had uh, time printed voter IDs mm. and all that. We've moved all the way from that point to a biometric register and have a computerized system that is mm. meant to uh, make sure that when me and you go through the process of uh, voting, mm -hmm. our votes are counted, and really our will is the one that is actually uh, mm -hmm. perpetrated. But if you listen to the things that have gone on over mm -hmm. there in terms of uh, contracts that we have signed and IT, and we all know we're in this country, I think it was 2012 or so, mm -hmm. where there was a huge buhaha after the elections of uh, where some IT company mm -hmm. or company was situated and something untoward happening there and everything. And of course, once uh, we uh, pass that particular issues, we sort of gloss over them and then mm -hmm. really come back to it. But full circle, it happens that you and I, uh, in terms of our data, actually exist somewhere uh, that somebody else has access to. Uh, the last time yeah. I read something about the fact that the server that actually holds that data mm. sits in Utah somewhere in exactly. the United States. Mm. And in this day and age with uh, uh, data privacy and all sorts of things and what people do, it's imperative that we check some of these things. I'm happy that uh, the new EC chair has put in those measures to forestall that. And then, of course, we'll get total control over the things that we do. But the yeah, the, the question there. is, I'm are, not one are to they, cry do they have the capacity? But the, the capacity? Because they were there, and then the deal was signed. Yeah, but the now you're that, So you need, like, we keep talking about local content and even transfer of technology mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the period. So you would even want to find out what went into that particular arrangement to okay. start with. Okay. If uh, in there there was some level of either capacity Training, mm -hmm. uh, uh, building mm -hmm. some transfer of technology, train, uh, educating the people mm -hmm. to be able to use the system over a period, and even transferring all the infrastructure mm -hmm. to a local team. We don't know that. I, I don't. Well, know I'm that. reading what but I read. What I read here is that, and I'm quoting the AC chair that. Um, with, with this 55-member IT department, the EC could not hold elections on its own without the tacit approval and authority of the IT vendor. Exactly. So that it means that the protocols that were put in place mm -hmm. and the arrangement, I mean, he's a lawyer, I'm sure he'll be able to explain properly, did not factor in these things. But in 2019, I think that it's about time, we keep talking about these things over mm -hmm. and over again. If we have the capacity to do so, and, and I mean, she even went on to say that we can even do it for far less than it has been. I'm right. not one to cry about spilled mm -hmm. milk. We've gone through a process. Um, some of these things would always um, change over time organically. Mm -hmm. uh, we've made some strides. I mean, 
it's always easy to point out the negatives mm. and say that this person did that, this person that did that. But in reality, I mean, if you look at us mm. and even mm. the countries surrounding us in this sub-region and across the world in terms of our democratic credentials, we've done fantastically well. Of course, for the political expediency, I'm mm. sure when Amaliba gets the opportunity, okay. he will say all sorts of things. But we do that to ourselves. But the truth okay. of the matter is that there's a lot of things, especially through uh, political uh, processes okay. that we can be proud of. Mm. What the EC needs to do, and for me, I think it's extremely important, is to put together that corporate governance structure that, that mm. Madame G. Mensah was talking about, so that our elections will not be one that every year when we we could have an election, there are certain hotspots somewhere, mm. there are certain issues somewhere. In the last elections, for instance, there were issues to do with the transmission of mm. the election. Right. Uh, Results. The results, mm. the people were making all, all sort of uh, reasons why that was possible. Some people were saying there was hacking. They themselves came back, there's no hacking. Mm. All sort of things. You know, so for me, I think that we've made some giant strides. It's imperative that we keep mm. on pushing the boundaries so that, I mean, and democracy itself is expensive. If you look mm. at the numbers that they're talking about, it's huge, which means that if we are paying all these monies, mm. then we also expect that we have a system that is almost uh, flawless. It, it, I, I, get, able, I, yeah. I get a sense from, from the EC boss that perhaps we were being shortchanged because she's talking about the fact that she described the old machines that were provided by the vendor as bulky and stated that um, through consultations with EU elections, IT, technical consultants, and other experienced elections managers, bodies in Africa, the commission would procure through a tender a more robust, efficient, and modern system that it would manage on its own at half the cost of upgrading the Well, but technology one. itself is so like fluid nowadays mm. that even if they, at the time that it was procured, it was the state of the art and it was really what was needed at the time. Today, I mean, we've had conversation around even this uh, national ID where at a point there was protocols for particular biometric data. Right. Now, the system has changed. Okay. So for me, I think that you can, if you want to nitpick and you want to No, I'm not fish, nitpicking. I'm telling no, you but what, that's what I'm telling you what go, she, she told go, the president. If you go fishing, you would find something. If you okay. go in there and try to sort of um, create a certain implication, I mean, impressions, you can do that. Mm. But what she's saying, I mean, if you look at it from, take a cursory look at it, if the machines were procured, for instance, in 2012, in 2019, for like an IT-backed mm. system, mm. for instance, it's very uh, true that by this time, the, the software and the systems are actually... And you, and you can get it for half the price uh, that yeah, you bought it, it for becomes, in 20, it, becomes, it becomes cheaper. Okay. You know, and the, they're, they're, the, the, the new technology becomes cheaper. Yes. Okay. Yes, I mean, I, you know that I okay. work in a... Quickly, in a uh, touch on your part. The, the, uh, Madam said she's going to form a, a committee to look at it, and then they possibly will go around the country and go to the U.S. to uh, to the study and know how they apply the report there. But the key question here is, why is it taking us so long to implement a law that's been passed to make sure that people in the diaspora get a chance to actually also exercise their franchise? Why? So I... I am on a few platforms where this is like a huge um, problem. It's a conversation where once it's, it's a law, like you're saying, that is in the past, and the Ghanaian, every Ghanaian that uh, is around the globe has mm. an opportunity to essentially exercise their franchise. Uh, and there has been attempts. I remember Farijan essentially saying that the law is there, mm. but really its implementation is going to be difficult. And we've gone full circle and spent monies and traveled around the world mm. and everything. Mm. Um, and I believe that it, because it's been done, and it, it's, it's, it's been done, there are smaller countries than ours that have been able to implement this, where there are nationals able to find mm. ways of voting. It might not be based on the same protocols that we use locally, mm. but they find ways. Either they go to their embassies, or you have to be in a certain particular jurisdiction, because even here locally, if you want to vote, you have to move from your home right. to a polling so, center right. to do so. Mm. So I think that once the commitment is there, once it's in there, and we haven't expunged that particular rope law from our books, then we have to be enjoined okay. to execute it. But within some um, if you like, that's the reason why it's taking this, this while to even implement because there are, of course, 
I mean, obvious logistical challenges and issues. Is government with. committed to, to of, making sure that we course. get it in 2020? Well, I mean, the government would have to be committed to it. And it's because the government is at the apex of making sure that the laws of this country are adhered to. Okay. Right? So at this point, of course, there has to be a consultation between the, uh, the, the political parties. IPAC. I think at the IPAC level and even the government in terms of how this thing is going to be funded, for instance. And then the EC to also give everybody the comfort that they have the capacity and the wherewithal to uh, implement that by also doing that concurrently with what happens okay. uh, locally. And then we move on. Okay, Council. The fallouts from the meeting, you see the ROPA, uh, abrogation of contracts, uh, credible elections, what say you? Lies and continuous lies will not uh, supersede the truth. Who is telling lies? Who is telling lies? Yes. He talked about in the lead up to 2012 elections, there was a, 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 an IT company that was being well, accused. I said there was. Yes. Conversation that. Mm -hmm. And the yes. empathy people convinced. Yes. Yeah. yes. So oh, is that a lie? Did well, I lie? Those were lies you were peddled. Ah. Now, okay. <laughs> you know <laughs> that <laughs> this matter <laughs> of the STL mm. ended up at the Supreme Court. Right. I was an active player in that case. Mm. And they couldn't prove that there was tampering of the results mm. by STL. That's a matter that has been closed. The Israeli. Yes. Mm. So don't go there. For Jim Mensa, I want to caution here. What about her penchant for bastardizing her predecessors? Mm -hmm. The work they have done mm -hmm. and creating the impression that everything that was there was bad, there was no good governance, uh, uh, corporate policy. Look, you don't do that. How will she feel mm -hmm. if after she goes, somebody comes and says that she was also lawless? Mm -hmm when she was handling the affairs mm -hmm. of EC. How would she feel? And the lawlessness is this, one. She's quoting figures and statistics. To and I'm also going to saying. give you figures or facts. Mm -hmm. I'll give you facts. You are not supposed to conduct by-elections beyond 60 days. Mm -hmm. You conducted a by-election at a, a Ayawa, so beyond 60 days. That's lawlessness. Currently, you are supposed to give a copy of the register, mm. the compiled register, right. to political parties. Exactly. CI 91, Regulation 22, to be specific, says that after every compilation, you give, you've not done that. Mm -hmm. So you don't go about bad muffing people who started the EC in very right. difficult times. Mm. They had no resources, uh, they, it was difficult for them. These are pioneers. So what you do, is when you come, you improve upon what they have done. Is it not a fair point she raises about uh, having a 55-member IT uh, team and not being able to run you know, your own elections on, on, on your own without a tacit agreement of a I will, consultant? I will, I will tell you and, why. And you don't even have a full grasp of what data it is. I will tell you. Mm. Look, the STL wanted to hand over all these things that he, she's talking about mm -hmm. to Afarijan. Okay. Afarijan said no. Why not? Because I don't want to be accused of being the sole owner, who, uh, being the sole person okay. who has the information and I can go in okay. and tamper with the laws. Okay. So Afarijan said that look, you also have, must have some control. Okay. So that it shouldn't be only me alone. Okay. Okay. Because so there's good reason for what happened. If you have come, I said he wanted uh, somebody to have a to second check, a check, check, yes, check uh, on, the, on his uh, powers. And you know, Farajan was very fair. Mm. He would tell you that I've never voted. So you have come, new king, new law. Don't you, you were not privy to those discussions. Mm. So don't bastardize your success. That's my pain mm. with her. You have come, your new policy. And she said that there was no good uh, corporate governance. Look, right. apart from me telling her that co uh, co uh, good corporate governance it hinges on the law, which she has been breaching the law every now and then, mm -hmm. apart from that, I would tell her that when uh, Charlotte, before Charlotte left, there was a five-year policy mm -hmm. 
You remember that was part of it that they did the changing of the logo? Yes. So, if you think that, look, I have come. I don't like what the people, other people did. Change it. But stop. Don't do bastardizing she, she also mentioned, I remember Dr. Bosman Asari had mentioned that, look, they don't have a PR machinery. A whole public affairs department and that was a problem for them because in terms of trying to communicate with the public it, it was done sparingly and so they wanted to have a more consistent way to bring the electricity that, 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 that is also a lie every, it's also part of uh, every every Ghanaian knows about Jakpasu but Jakpasu Eric is Jakpasu. one man no she <laughs> says that there's no PR no she said system. there's no PR machinery one man cannot run it no system. no I am saying that this is a way to bastardize. They are bastardized. Okay. Why? On Ropa. We have said that we support Ropa, NDC. But it should be done everywhere. Okay. When you put a ballot box in uh, Hanover in Germany, okay. put a ballot box at Lomi. Okay. Togo. Okay. Then we see the number of votes that will come from each place. Okay. You cannot, it won't happen. You cannot choose and pick places that you put the ballot boxes. It must be, Ropa must be everywhere Ga a Ghanaian lives. Okay. Without that, no Rupa. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Laura Abraham Amaleba has been my guest. He's, he's spoke here on behalf of the NDC and Eric Chum is also a member of the MPP's communication team. Gentlemen, thank you very much for thank your you. time. And uh, yesterday the food was good. I wouldn't say where. Which food was but I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, going to reveal our secret? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, Mr. Jones Nelson <laughs> of the GTA, you're watching from Tamale. Good morning to you.